Hey folks, it's Chris Wall. Today we're gonna to create a child module and we're gonna use the mechanism of outputs to grab information from the child module and pass it up to the parent module so that it can use it to build the budget name. Let's get coding! So what we're gonna do is take the code from the last video where we were creating a budget and adding some randomness to it and outputting some information and we're gonna add a child module to it. I'll leave a link right there for you. You can see here we just got a random pet name and integer being generated and it throws that information into the budget. But let's say we didn't want this randomness to be part of the main file. Perhaps we want this to be somewhere else and referenced as a child module. Well, in that case, what you typically wanna do is create a folder and we'll just call this child to make it simple. You can call it anything you want. And you would throw the code in there. So I'm gonna put a main.tf in there, throw these resources in there, and I have gotten rid of them in the main file. They're no longer there. And by default, just having a folder nested doesn't do anything. You have to tell the parent module where the child module is because it could be locally in a folder or remote somewhere or just grab from some sort of community space, doesn't matter. So we have to actually create some connective tissue there. At the same time, I've already created a branch, so let's just check out the parent-child output branch that contains the code, and we'll walk through it. Now, like I was showing a little bit earlier, you create a child folder, and the code in there doesn't change. It's the same as you saw before. The pet and the integer is the same. But in order to get the data into a parent module, we have to output it. And so that requires a very specific set of code. In this case, we're going to build two output objects. Each one is taking resources that were made in the child module and kind of packaging them up into a new object that can be passed elsewhere, such as to the parent's module. The first resource called pet-name is grabbing the random pet name, and the other one called number result is taking the result of the random integer resource and packaging those up. So those contextual names, pet-name and number-result, those are specific. We have to actually use that later. And you'll see that if I go back to the parent module, this is the new parent module, all we have to do is actually put this little block of code in here that says module. Then you give the module a name, I'm just calling it child, and I'm telling it where the child module is. Specifically, it's in the relative current location of the code, the dot slash slash means here in a subfolder called child. Additionally, I've changed the name of the resource for the budget, referencing the module.child.pet-name and dot number dash result. Those are the outputs that we got from the child module. So let's actually run this code. Uh, first, I'll need to initialize it because anytime you add a module, you have to do an initialization because it needs to go grab the code and figure out where this module is and store that into the configuration. So now that we have a configuration that is good to go, I'll do a plan. And this is where we can see a lot more than normal when we run a plan. It's gonna be a little bit different. So I'll kind of start through the top here. If you've seen my other videos, this is the same. This is the budget as you would normally expect. And everything's a create because I've deleted the budget in the past. But notice that the random integer and random pet look a little bit different. There's that module.child.random underscore integer dot number. That's the new path. This just means that when we're working with child modules, we have to reference their outputs with module dot name of the child module. That's why you were saying module.child and then the name of the output that we created. That's how you create that connectivity between the child module data and the parent module that may wanna use that data to further whatever it's doing. Let's go ahead and apply this and I'm gonna use a flag I haven't used before, auto approve. It's pretty dangerous, don't really recommend using it on a normal basis, but I thought I would show that here and I tend to do it when it's just something that I'm demoing and I'm not waiting for it to say yes. So that's gonna automatically approve the changes. And now we have three new resources, the AWS budgets budget, that's the budget itself, as well as the two resources in the child. The interesting thing is you can actually see all of this in the state file if you want. So I'm gonna show you a command to show all the different objects that exist in the state. We just do terraform state list. That's going to list all the objects in the state of this particular plan. So there you can see the parent object in the budget as well as the two child objects in the module.child item there. So just different ways that you can see what's going on in your Terraform configuration. So there we go, a fairly useful and pretty common application of outputs to pass information between parent and child modules. And it's something that you can get done pretty quickly once you get the concept. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, subscribe, comment if you'd like something to happen in a future video. I'd love to hear your feedback and happy terraforming.